John Whittingdale. Um, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. It is a pleasure to respond to this important debate on behalf of the Government. As my honourable friend, the Minister for Culture, said at the beginning, this has been a hugely challenging year for the entertainment and cultural sectors. Although a vast number of businesses in this country have suffered from the restrictions of lockdown, it is perhaps, as my honourable friends for Stockton South and North West Durham said, it is perhaps the entertainment and cultural sectors that have been hit amongst the, the hardest uh, in the economy. I would like to thank all those who have participated in this debate. Um, we have had 55 backbench speeches during the course of the debate, and I know, Mr Deputy Speaker, as you indicated, there are more members who wanted to speak and were unable to do so. But the passion that has been shown today is a demonstration of how important culture and entertainment are, not just to our economy and our heritage, but to our, to our well-being as a nation. A number of speakers have, have uh, emphasised this by pointing out the economic contribution that the creative industries make. In particular, my honourable friends for Clacton, High Peak, Berry North, Bolton West, Chipping Barnet, all uh, po pointed to the vast contribution, uh, £116 billion, which the creative industries make, supporting 2.1 million jobs. But they also went on to point out that it is not just an economic contribution. The cultural industries and entertainment sector are critical to the well-being of the nation. They bring joy to us. And whilst many have um, been unable to operate uh, over the course of the last year, I would like to pay tribute actually to those that have sought to fill the gap, in particular the broadcasters who have done a fantastic job in keeping us entertained and keeping the morale of the nation up. But it is not the same as being able to enjoy at first hand the cultural interactions uh, that bring so much value to our lives. And I think all of us yearn to be able to walk through a museum again, to sit and watch a play, or in my own case particularly, to go to the cinema or to enjoy live music. Like the members for Cardiff West and Perth and East Perthshire said, live music brings an enjoyment which all of us feel is absent from our lives. And I particularly um, have taken note of the recommendation of my honourable friend for Keithley to go and look out Deco as soon as, uh, and the mashups they do as soon as uh, I'm able to do so again. A number of members have spoken with great power about the cultural institutions and their own constituencies. We are, of course, familiar with the West End Theatre, which is famous throughout the world. But there are other theatres in London, like the Theatre Royal Stratford, mentioned by the Honourable Member for Barking, or New Wimbledon Theatre, uh, mentioned by the Member for Wimbledon. But as my Honourable Friend, the Member for South Holland, said, it is not just in London. And we should recognise that the cultural institutions of our country are strong right across all of our nations. Uh, and so I'm looking forward. One of my regrets is that I was appointed to this job just three weeks before before lockdown started, and I wish for the day when I can go out and visit some of the places that have been mentioned, the Opera House in Buxton, the railways of Darlington, the zoo in Dudley, the castles in Dover, and indeed even funny girls in Blackpool. Um, <laughs> the best support that we can give to all of these cultural institutions is an assurance that the time when they can reopen is coming. That is why the roadmap is so absolutely critical, as my honourable friend, the member for Gravesham, pointed out, as indeed did the member for Bracknell. And we do now have a clear plan, uh, which is irreversible. Uh, we have a certainty that we can give as to when these institutions can start to operate it again. And I, I, of course, understand people would rather that it came sooner, but I can say to my honourable friend, for Gra Bracknell, that grassroots sport, including golf, will be able to resume from the 29th of March. And the reason that we have been able to offer this assurance has been, as my honourable friends for Blackpool South and for Dudley North pointed out, the success of the vaccination programme. Um, and I pay tribute to all those who have worked so hard uh, and continue to do so, to roll it out, including indeed the member for Dudley North, who said that he was a volunteer in his local vaccination centre. Because the worst thing that could happen to our cultural institutions is to give them a date 
on which they can reopen and then have to reverse it again. All of us know of the uh, huge disappointment and indeed cost to many who had planned to reopen. I think just as an example, Bill Kenwright's love letters, which was due to reopen uh, at the beginning of December, and just a few days later, London was put back into Tier 3 status and it wasn't able to go ahead. So we do need to be relatively confident um, about those dates. And several honourable members mentioned the work that the department is doing, particularly to explore how large events can return, um, preferably without social di distancing and restrictive capacity caps. And so I wanted to uh, assure the honourable members for Loughborough, for Chipping Barnet and for Wimbledon that we have established the events research programme to look at how those large events can resume. And in doing so, we are looking at the pilots which were conducted uh, last year uh, to consider the effectiveness of various measures to reduce the transmission risk in large event venues, including uh, testing. And officials from my department and the Department of Health are working closely to combine the re existing work streams into one overall research programme. And that programme will first start with events such as Project Encore, uh, which hopefully will set out uh, the roadmap for when we can actually see those larger events, which perhaps are the most challenging, uh, start again. But a number of my honourable friends have recognised the huge commitment that the government has made uh, to the cultural sector through the £1.57 billion cultural recovery fund. And I'd like to thank my honourable friends for Haywood and Middleton, for Gloucester, uh, for North Norfolk, for recognising the strength of that commitment. And indeed, my honourable friend for Warrington South, who pointed us on top of the £1.57 billion at the £500 million uh, film and TV production restart scheme. And of course, the government recognises the need to continue that support until these institutions can reopen once again. Um, I cannot uh, give details of what my right of a friend, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, will be announcing tomorrow, although there have already been some indications that he will be giving further support to the cultural se sector. Um, that sector has benefited, as I have said, and should continue to do so, including, as I can say to my honourable friend, the member for Crewe and Natwich, nightclubs and music venues, which have been eligible for support. Uh, but the, what I can say to the House is that, as many have recognised, our cultural and entertainment sectors are world-leading. They are a major contributor, not just to the economic growth of this country, but to our standing around the world. And I can therefore confident that when we resume, and I echo the words my honourable friend from Milton Keynes North, those sectors will come back even stronger. Order. Order.